Lord? What are you talking about? Is a gay couple in a state of temptation? Oh, Lord, you're referring to my recent encyclical, Fiducia Supplicans. Well, I'm not a theologian, so I'll let Tucho here talk for me. Thanks, Frank. Well, Lord, from a strictly liturgical point of view, Victor, don't bless temptation. But we can't lose pastoral charity. Victor, don't bless temptation. But they'll think we're narcissistic, authoritarian, and elitist judges who only deny, reject, and exclude. Are you suggesting something about me, Victor? And see, individual situations are so complex. Then why are you talking of blessing even complexer couples? Victor, it's very simple. Don't bless even sexually active gay individuals much less tempted gay couples. But they need to be creative in expressing their popular piety. You and I know, Victor, that this has nothing to do with their creativity and everything to do with the media's creativity. No, Lord, they're growing gradually and we need to accompany them on their journey toward morality Get behind me, Satan. You promote their moral development fastest by letting their own conscience pain them, not by endorsing them. But Lord, they can't bless you, so we should be able to bless them. Even demons have to acknowledge and adore me. That entitles them to nothing. But God... You never turn away anyone who approaches you. No one can come to me unless the Father draw him in faith. Yet even them I frequently turn away, for the grace I give is the grace I choose to give, and often it isn't even recognized. Surely, God, we can let blessings slip by as long as we don't make a liturgical rite for it. No, that would be to tacitly consent to a priest winking at evil. But we don't intend to legitimize anything. Would you lie to me, Victor Manuel Fernandez? Well, we don't intend to legitimize anything yet. So you intend to possibly legitimize it later, and therefore, indirectly, you are right now contingently intending to possibly legitimize sins someday. All of that with complete disregard for my bride's honor. Look, Lord, it's still a totally spontaneous, simple gesture made by a mere on-the-spot decision of no moral value, which dirties the reputation of my bride with the confusion and scandal that you speciously deny, while also lulling sinners into a false sense of complacency. Lulling? I wrote that the blessing was for people coming humbly as sinners, destitute, begging to mature and grow in fidelity. Will not many of them come just for the photo op? To actually create scandal while ignoring the words? Yes. Victor, have you never heard it said, let your yes be yes and your no be no and anything more than this is from the devil, that the lips of a priest shall guard truth, teaching them to discern between the holy and the profane? But we can't know their spiritual state. Consciences are often uneducated. As I said, pastoral charity requires us not to treat simply as sinners. Those whose guilt or responsibility may be attenuated by various factors affecting subjective imputability. How could anyone 
not know something that I have written on their hearts about how the sexual organs are honorably used. Yes, but humans are emotional. Emotional! And so psychologically complex! So, you propose premature blessings as pastoral charity for potential mental patients. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe? Victor, did I immediately bless that woman caught in adultery? Or did I say go and sin no more, communicating a law to her? Have you never heard it said that a priesthood is instituted to atone for violations of a law? And before I came with a message of grace and salvation, did no one else come before me preaching a message of lawful repentance? And before you yourself were ordained a priest, were you not first ordained a deacon to preach my law, even the obedience of faith? So, law comes first, then sacrifices and blessings? Yes. So what about all those divorced and remarried people whom we invited to communion? Francis. <coughs> what? 